think your, maybe your gain's a little bit lower than others, but. Yeah, it normally is as well, just to turn out the um, the street noise in the background. Even day. What are you doing? It's been a long time. Yeah, it's been a while. John and Steve. Steve, how was vacation? You're up here. You said one week and then you're gone for two, so it must have been good. Uh, it was confusion. I thought the race week was next week, so um, it just got combined. So lots of fun, lots of intensity. It's always what fun. kind of race? Uh, sailing. There's a race week in Anacortes where uh, apparently it's one of the few ones that's still left that actually still going. And there's one in Europe, so it's just six days of constant racing and lots of wind, and it's pretty cool. Did anyone end up upside down like your background? I uh, well, there was. So you're all kind of prepping for a start for your because they run in five minute increments, and there was one really good start that apparently too many boats were watching. And next thing we knew, we heard a crunch, and uh, one sailboat because they have bow spritz for the spinnakers literally harpooned another boat. Uh, so that was a little interesting um, and literally poked a hole in it. So that was uh, the worst. But no, sailboats don't tend to turn upside down, just those little whalers. Yeah. Um, there was some catamaran, unfortunately, though. Um, that's a whole other story of being careful of where you are and wearing a flotation device. So that's the sad part of it. But it was a lot of fun. Going on vacation and relaxing on a beach lets your mind wander too much. When you have to do something like that, you really don't have much choice but to focus on that. So it's nice to have a force break. I think it's a. Um, all right. Lots of things up here, and I'm bringing up the notes. Um, first in the chat. Um, good, good, good. Yeah, Jason, I'm sorry. I've told you like twice that I'm going to review that 822, but and I'm a, a, bu a bum. Oh, he's not even on the call yet. No, the, the next point is relevant to that, I think. And oh, <clears throat> I'm sure we can we can modify the, the time. Uh, we've we've done all manner of incantations of, of like figuring out, but I don't even remember the, the last tool that we used. If, if Doodle, Doodle do, just works just to figure out kind of maybe not a specific day of the month, you know, like, but just if you had to guess a weekly pattern that's more generally good than others, but and you, usually the scheduling becomes a fiasco because it does not ever, ever, ever accommodate everybody. If we're going to move, then, maybe we can move it to a time that can help our UK or Asian folks that are just yeah. That's that UK and Europe, um, and we really don't. I mean, like we do have folks um, in Asia that would benefit by it being later, because um, I do hear that you know there's a few folks from China and Japan that watch the recordings and feed in information afterwards, and of course Alexa, and he even like wakes up late in the day for Australia time, even so it's not. Anyhow, whatever. Um, I think honestly that, that we probably have more bulk share folks if we just shifted it a little bit earlier, then it would be okay for Europe to uh, Pacific standard. Um, yeah, Doodle will be helpful. Okay, so I will take notes down.
Okie dokie. Uh, Vanessa, you, do you want to take the floor? Yeah, sure. Um, so, oh gosh, I think it was two meetings ago, maybe three meetings ago, we were very, at the very end of the meeting, we were talking about just how hard it was to kind of look at all the specs together in one place. And I made a suggestion about an RFC style documentation thing. And what I've uh, created that uh, Vincent's highlighting now is uh, just a basic prototype. And the way that it works is that um, you basically just define metadata in the repository for each of these specs. Like, so what files within the repository are relevant to the spec. And then it gets all the files and it, it renders them. It uh, fixes the paths to the images, uh, fixes some of the, um, the URLs. And that's kind of it in a nutshell. It's like a place you oh, and the, it also, obviously also renders the, um, the navigation, the table of contents on the right. And I just, <laughs> yeah, a lot of that meta, quote metadata at the top, I kind of just made up. So obviously everything here is editable, uh, changeable. Um, but the basic idea is this is sort of like a prototype for what we could kind of have for different specs, just to provide an interface so that someone who just really wants to like dig into a spec can navigate it without like jumping between repositories and links and kind of being like, well, is this part of the spec or is this just like a link going somewhere else? Um, there can also be other content here too. I think in the meeting where we originally brought it up, there was some diagram that someone wanted to put somewhere. So yeah, that's mostly it. Uh, what do folks think? I think it's pretty great. I was just, I was trying to find a, 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 um, a the only thing, so is, how, how is the metadata, is the metadata just something that like sidecars next to what's already there? Or is it like an additional markup that is read by the markdown parser? Uh, if, if you wanna take a look at the repository, uh, we, could, we could walk through it on the screen share. Um, can you paste a link to that? Yeah, I guess that's, that's uh, oh, github.com slash vsock slash RFC dash Jekyll. The only reason I was asking is it would be almost uh, oh, that's very helpful. Thanks, Pink. Um, okay, cool. Um, so basically, if you want to look in pages, so this is this just fetches and pulls it in. So it could be. Yeah, so in each of these folders, the index is the one that, um, you know, it has a title. I gave it an ID. I guess it doesn't need an ID. And then you define like the permalink. And that's it. And then in the other ones, you do the same thing. You say like, okay, this is the file name. And you just say that it's a parent of, so let's see. Yeah, so the, the key, the key is really the parent that's saying like this falls under the distribution spec. So it's a little bit of work just to add these files when there's a new spec, but one, you can just open an issue and I'll be happy to do it. And it's it's like not that much metadata. So it, it doesn't actually fetch in the content itself also. Okay. It's right. just, so it's the, just the metadata content, pointing to where it's at. Yeah, the content is fetched when you actually load the page. Mm -hmm. So could this just be a, a sub project of, of open containers and we aggregate all the specs into the sub project right. and then host it as a as like a spec website? Yeah, that, that's kind of what I was thinking. It's just like a single place to go and you just host it as a spec website. Yeah, like specs.opencontainers.org or something. Kind of cool. I'd, I'd like it if we didn't directly link to GitHub when I have to talk about specs. I'd like this idea in general. Yeah, love it. Um, the only, like, where does it actually show that it's fetching from? Oh, so um, look at the, you want to look in the layouts folder. Yeah, so layouts, and then click on page. That's, that's basically it. So we could just have it, you know, either following main or 
it eventually has it where it's yeah like a, v, a v1 v1 version mm -hmm. so we could have like a specs dot whatever slash v1 and or you know like whichever one so the i don't know but yeah Maybe the version um, of it is a great idea especially as we start considering that yeah um and uh, the, the other reason i was asking about uh is is how it if and how it could handle some of the redirects is if it was actually like reading any of the any of the since this is fetching straight from the markdown that's on the other repo if there was markdown if there was annotations or metadata needed in the spec markdown that would make it do something in the situation where it's actually pointing to something that if you click that link it would actually go to github versus you click yeah, that so the, the way it, would the logic... get, it would hop up and over to that same link, but on this. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so the way that it works now is that relative, if it finds a relative path, it's going to say, okay, this is another page that I know about. And then it's going to link to a page within there. If it links to a GitHub, like a full GitHub URL, it is going to go to that GitHub URL. Um, so yeah. I haven't put in any logic to be to be able for it to say, oh, this GitHub URL is another yeah. spec here. I'll just link to it here instead. It's a, a Ruby Ruby exercise, but um, which is not a hard requirement because there are times in the, in the it, there are times when you would want to say, like, no, I actually mean, you know, just go go read some image spec. Um, link, you know, specifically. And I'm pretty sure it would be, I'd like to worry about that later. Um, I like it a lot. Vanessa? Cool, yeah. Um, so I guess uh, other feedback would be, should there be anything else here? You know, should this thing have working groups? Should it have a place where you can put things that are under development, but not quite ready. It could just be, you know, the way that it is now, that would be sort of the simplest thing, but it could also be a place where you could, we could put other content if that would be desired. Yeah, it, it, you know, some of these Jekyll sites that get compiled into like a GitHub IO. Um, I know that uh, I've worked with a few projects where they're very useful. Um, it's a whole, thing of like who you know maintaining it making sure that it stays like if ideally I I like something like this especially if it actually hit to like honor versions like branched versions in the path. I don't know how it could do that nicely but since each each repo that you're you know each child repo that you have here has their own release tags. Yeah, can, um, we, can we have it just generate on uh, on request so you could generate it for any version of any spec yeah, and then we have a, I think an index page? I think we would just, yeah, I think we would add another layer to that index page where the person would click a version and then the version would dive into and do the request for the URL for whatever version was requested. Yeah. As long and as long as it's a, a, get, a get tag that's still like alive and associated exactly. and not yeah, some but, kind of but, release that doesn't have a tag. But don't let that complexity delay the introduction of this. If that makes Correct. Like, yeah. Like, the, this the only, is... My only hope in that complexity and recommending it was that, like, if there was something that was effectively here's the permanent URL to the rendered documents as they stand. Effectively, to me, and somebody else could argue, but I'm uh, is satisfies the thing of why we ever generated uh, HTML and you know PDFs is that somebody could have something that's like. You know, if I go to print this thing off and it looks like a certain way, um, but it, oh, in, yeah, in the link, the <laughs> well, I'm just saying, but in the in the URL, it's like, no, this is actually the, the spec as it was at v .o, o or v .o one or whatever, like, and it looks fine and great. And we don't have to like make this. We could just make our CI say that, yeah, it, it you know, it, the page is up and it looks, it looks fine. Who cares about PDFs and HTML output? Does that make sense? 
most yeah. people most people would ha be happy to watch the PDFs and the HTML die. I know Delitsky just put some effort into updating that container build pipeline piece. Um, but it's useful for other things like the conformance test. So it's okay. uh, this what is good. What container build pipeline are you talking about? Uh, I'm... The one that turns Markdown into PDFs. Yep. This thing. doc based, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, I forgot. This thing about that. That, that for had forever been using a, a GitHub image that I had built five years ago. So it, it used to be Fedora 25 yeah. or something terrible. And now the list just went through the effort to update this. And I, I think it still would be fine to watch it not be using Pandoc. Check out the, the make file and um, in distribution spec. <laughs> This piece. So we, we generate these to make sure that it's still valid, like can produce valid PDFs and HTML documents. Um, and it uses these two things. But um, so now we have GitHub Actions that can produce a Pandoc image, a lint thing, and then a component. Image. So but these are all unrelated. My, my point. My, yeah, I would, I would keep those. Be confusing. I would like to get rid of those. Well, it'd be fine to watch watch the PDF fan dot thing. Whatever, we'll figure it out. Because this was the um, the existing canonical like. This is the way it was at the time of the release. And if this was built into like a perma, perma URL, then I feel like it accomplishes the same thing. So, uh, good stuff. Um, you had, there were a couple other links, I think, in one of, in the, in the, the email when you first proposed this to the, the, to the dev list, um, but this is currently just the, the POC to review. It would look like its own repo under open containers and have to have some some settings set for the GitHub, for the open containers org, I guess. So you mean, what would it take to move it over or to implement it there? Is that the question? Yes. Yeah, so that, that would be pretty easy. Um, you would just basically probably template it or whatever, pull it, push it somewhere else. And then you would just change the, the base URLs in the Jekyll config. Um, and it would, you know, and, and change whatever other little metadata or styles you're interested in. And then we could figure out the names of the path, but what it would look like later. And I can I can add support for versions, but before we do that, if you, if you'd like. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Uh, I think I saw Amy is on the call. Yes. What's up? I oh, know. Just just brainstorming, getting what it would. We'll, we'll we'll tag up later, but we can chat on Slack about that. I think I think most people think this is nice and readable and modern enough so good to actually have like a. a a domain pointer to this as the specs uh, ah, okay. it, it rendered and so it'd probably be like its own repo on, on on github and then we'll have to figure out dns pointers at some point to make sure that it looks looks nice to have like specs.opencontainers.org or something but we'll get to that later 
Yes, one totally step fine. At a time. I was like, hang on, what is the question here? And like, oh yeah, how yeah. to be able to actually make this like how to publish? Cool. Yeah, let's fix that. Yeah, I usually just need like a C name uh, for OpenContainers.github to have. And then it yeah. auto magically works because GitHub is great like that. Yep. Good, good, good. Nice. Yeah, I'll add versions and then I'll ping the list or whatever with uh, next steps. And uh, it, it, I, I would welcome, you know, like I know you, you did the, the heavy lifting on the front end of it. Um, I have not touched Jekyll in 10 years, easy, um, but would love if anybody has experience in that, that we could like have some code owners mentioned there for folks to either take ongoing improvements or fixes as they need, need to be. So it's not just you, you know, being called every time. Okay. I mean, I don't, I don't mind. It's, it's not super sure. hard. I, you can Fair. let me know. Yeah. Good, good for that. But also somebody else to share the, share the, uh, share the, the party as well. So it's always good. Is, it, is there a way we can bypass the standard process of uh, creating an open container sub project? It, it varies. Yeah. It varies for some of these different projects. Because even like we we had the one set up for um, mm -hmm. Tulitsky, yeah, this is, like this one was pretty low, low low barrier of like, hey, these are two containers that we need and would reuse across all the different specs. Gotcha. It's not even like its own project, really, per se. But kind of collective for the for all the specs, so it was, it was the, like there there is some of these that are like basically administrative. Um, uh, there is obviously some amount of code like uh, okay, so we just threw some names in here then. Oh, I'm a maintainer <laughs> uh, of this one. Great. Okay. I don't, I don't even remember. Yeah, I, I'll uh, I'll step up into that role, I suppose. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Start making changes for no reason. Um, yeah. No. It, so the, some of these that are effectively administrative, we could probably comment. Uh, you know, add add uh, words of such that like these are. Um, yeah, I don't know what to call them, but I I think for like cool. CI related stuff, we shouldn't. We should add something to governance where we don't have to go through the hoops. Okay. Yeah. It, I mean, it, it, might be, it relates to all of them. Vanessa, it might be good to put together the plan of like, hey, we need a subdomain. We, you know, the we need to pull in the specs, that that kind of thing. Yeah, um, anyways, I can do that. So, yeah. I'll put that in the email that I send in the future. Future Vanessa not, will remember these things. <laughs> I'm not on the TOB anymore, but yeah, right. I'm not on the TV, TOB anymore, but that would be an easy LGTM for me. So this would this this would be immense, immensely useful. Okay. Um. Uh, uh, anything else on this one? Uh, anything else on the, the RFC Jekyll bit? Thanks for letting me uh, present it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, is, I know I, I, I said the, the grooming next, and we're almost at halfway mark. Um, and I'd love to get to that because we have a few, you know, on keystroke. Um, is Jason even here, or is there? Is this mostly just a? Uh, he's uh, he's not here. He um, updated the PR and left a comment on it, and um, 
I think wanted to discuss it, but uh, doesn't have time. I mean, so, but based on discussion with yours truly, no, yours, you, you know, I never know how to use word yours truly. It's confusing. Me. I, I don't use so, it incorrectly. Tell me, tell me about this. What what discussion did you have? Sure. Um, so, uh, I believe Jason started to go implement this, and uh, I pointed out something that was obvious to me, but perhaps not everyone in the world. Um, if you have both a tag pointing to an image and a digest for that image, um, it is important that the tag points to the same thing as the digest. Uh, so this comes up for, say, a multi-platform image. Mm -hmm. If you want to have the base of every child image um, and also point to the, the base by tag, uh, should the child digest match the base child's digest or should the child digest point to the match its own architecture or whatever right and, and my my thinking was that it should match the the parent uh, because if you wanted to make any tooling around this that says like oh has this um, tag moved do i need to update do i need to rebase my image um, it's helpful if the tag points to the digest you should be checking and you don't have to like parse the thing and See, oh, am I, is is the digest a child of this thing that was tagged? Well, that that it is a, a very good sticking point. I'll, I'll, I'll be curious to see the wording that he used to update it. Um, to me, this also even it, this effectively brings. I like to keep some of these PR conversations as narrow as possible so that they don't just grab the tablecloth as they're running by. Right. But this almost pulls in the conversation that we've kind of touched on in the past, and it hasn't ever really mattered. So we have ignored it. But some of the some of the tools over the years have effectively transparently pulled through that initial digest. So even on some like the Podman containers image logic, if you fetched a multi-image, you know, even a specific digest of a multi-image. It would only, it would like then it would fetch and validate that thing in the, you know, the top level, but then it would silently fetch the under architecture that it's interested in and, you know, validate those independently. So the thing that you're left with was then only the child, even though in the handshake, it validated the top level, but then you're only left with the child afterwards. Um, it was one of those like silent behaviors that as a user, you never care or never see it, but you're now left with effectively something different than you start. Uh, you know, like the child of something that you started with the parent. Yeah, you, you throw away some information that is actually useful. Um, yeah. For most use cases, it doesn't actually matter. Um, this is one where it does. Yeah, I, mean, I think that this is kind of like the latest thing in some ways. It's like you never want your yeah. friends to, to really point to latest because that always is an interesting floating. But even in a yeah. from statement, it's hard to say why would a should a from statement point to a multi arc image because if you build it on a different machine, you could wind up accidentally um, with a different base. But if you are pointing to an index, then yeah, the digest should match the index. So that's that's a really good clarification. Hey, uh, I'm not sure if I understand this issue fully. What what's the what what feature are we trying to get out of it? What's the um, I'll, I'll do my best. Um, so I think there's a handful of things. Uh, the things that excite me the most are um, one is just having some metadata about the, the lineage of your image, right? And if you know I built this based on Ubuntu, whatever, um, it's, it's easier to write tooling to look for, uh, say, things that are vulnerable to something. Uh, if you know the base image it came from, it's just nice from you know like a supply chain perspective. Uh, what I want to do with this is write some tooling around automatic um, patching, more or less. So um, if if the image is annotated with its base image, uh, I can detect changes to that base image and rebuild and redeploy things automatically without having to do anything manually. And, and, and you wanted to be able to do that without having the original patched image in place. You want to be able to 
find the image that was dependent on the base image and then then look those up without because if you know if you if you patch a layer and you know which layer it was patched from you could just look those up in all the images right you have to do a reverse lookup but right right so this work. is kind of um pushes some information rightward uh, so that I could write tooling that is generic yeah. across an image. Uh, and you know maybe you don't actually trigger a patch, but just being able to surface the fact that, hey, this was built from an image that is no longer uh, V2. Like V2 has moved on. You should probably bump your stuff as well. It, having just, it built into it really, it does help. I mean, we, with with ACR tasks, we actually do the space image update notification stuff, but we have to you have to actually build with tasks to do that because we grab that digest at build time because it's not captured anywhere else. So that means that that is kind of captured in that environment. If it's if something is built and the digest of what it was built against is captured in it, then I can hand it to something else and that other thing doesn't need to actually build it. It can just like, oh, all I have to do is just check whatever registry that thing is coming from. Is that still the digest that matches that tag? Is, you, is this is that because of like flat flattening or otherwise, or I mean, splashing or otherwise? Say that again. Well, it, it, you capture some information that was like a layer at some point during the build that's never captured anywhere else. Is that because it's like squashed or delayed? Oh no 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 no. Never mind. It's even just the problem is lost. Never mind. Yeah, it's really but, just the digest yeah, yeah. So, it's, the, it's the from statement kind of thing. And granted, there's other ways to build images. And that was part yeah, of I was that. just thinking uh, that this this also relates to like this the squashing, you know, squashing thing that like not only is your from lost, but all the original layers are also lost, you know, like lost and thrown away. So if you so what if you have two images that are base images, the same digest, but they have separate names, like how do you put both names into the image that's built from that, or do you just pick it from the lineage that you're building at the time? Uh, like how, how does that work when you have multiple paths to the same content? I would, I would assume the, the, the from that it was built with and then the digest. So you could have all, you could have many names pointing to something, but ultimately it's the digest that is resolved. Are you referring to like a multi multi step build where you have an SDK that compiles the code and then you have another it, image? It could even no, be no, just no. it could even be just like Quay, Quay IO and Docker IO pointing to the yeah. same thing. Yeah, I'm thinking like okay, I download uh, Ubuntu and then I like relabel it for my local registry and then I say from my local registry. Um, and then now do I put in the original Ubuntu version from uh, the Docker registry or do I put in the one from my local registry? Like we don't really have necessarily have guidance on that because we assume that this is canonical. The, uh, the, you know, while I don't think this is like a, like a, like a bad thing per se, I, I think it introduces quite a lot of problems that really exist in the build system itself. Um, uh, so like if you, because really, okay, so you're saying, okay, well, we want to like look at, um, you want to look at like vulnerabilities and stuff. And so you have a from statement, like wouldn't, why not just store the whole Docker file in there, right? So then you can go and look at what was actually used to build it, right? Or, or whatever build, you know, production artifact for the image. Um, so what I've seen in the way that people use Docker images when there's when there's several of them and they're all kind of interlinked and, and based on each other is, the dependency relationship doesn't uh, exist at the image level, but really um, exists at like the Docker file level. At least that, that's what I've that's what I've seen recently. Does that make sense? But the Docker file yeah. doesn't capture what was done at that point in time, right? Like you're it's trying to snapshot when this Docker file was run. What was the digest? Because a week like, from now, like the it output may never change. No, no. Uh, I, for, I, the, I get... for the for the Docker for the Docker file to to, I mean, I think this is a, even gets in that starts venturing down the the, the S bomb, which is also a good topic. But like, if it captured the con, you know, the checksum of the context. Like, here's the here's the Docker file. The checksum of the context. The checksum of every ad or copy. <laughs> um, yeah, well, that, that, that's not what I'm suggesting. But what I'm what I'm what I'm saying is there's a layer of dependency at the build layer that we don't necessarily represent in images, and then. We're trying to push like one small sliver of that build data down. 
Um, and I think the thought is that we can say, okay, I can take the image and then figure out what the next version of it, of it is. And then use that digest to figure out, I mean, it, it's the idea that you use the, the current, the, that image name to like figure out what the next version is, or do you use the digest to figure out if it's vulnerable? Like, I think when you start unpacking these unit use cases, this, this, it, like, like this proposal has come up before and I'm trying to think of, you know, why we didn't do it before or like what made it difficult. And these are the issues that came up. It was, it was largely your aversions and, and I didn't, you know, like, uh, it, it, it was largely that this should be solved in other ways, Stephen. So, uh, yeah. But I'm, I'm glad I'll you're here. For Jason, because you know he obviously has some thoughts on it. But the conversations we had at the time about this was because all these things came up just recently, and the S bomb was a good example. And the thought process was, this this is an, a small so, step that allows a very scoped set of work that can be done. And like I said, we we've been doing this with Task for a while. We we, we do track all of the uh, digest in a multi stage build, for instance. Um, but it's an optional thing. You can choose the just the final image or all the things that went into it. And it was thought of, this would be have value on its own. And then an S bomb would take it to the next level. So it was, it's really just, there's a certain set of scoping that this was pretty useful. And then if you want something more complicated, then you could use an S bomb that has not only all the base images, it has the compiler flags, you know, all of the stuff that you're kind of talking about, Stephen. And, and in the end, these are just suggested usages of a key in an annotation. So it's obviously optional information. It's just guidelines on how folks could or should could or should use it anyway. So um, build, build your own adventure. Yeah. So I can maybe color that a little more. Um, like personally, I have at this point five different tools I use to build container images. Um, and so I don't really want to solve this problem within the build tool if I can avoid it. Uh, so, um, and so what I'd like to do basically is express the dependency graph, uh, in terms of an image. Um, and so has this, has this been demonstrated in, in like with your own namespace? Um, right? Cause like you can just add an annotations, right? They don't need to be like common across all. all right. The, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. If, if it ends up that like we as an OCI group think that this is uh, too hairy to actually standardize, that's fine. Uh, we'll just use our own namespace, I think. But uh, the idea was that this seems like a common enough use case and enough people have asked for it that maybe we uh, try again and see what people think. Um, and of course, I'm happy to change the string in the future to a standardized thing if we change our mind in the future. Any other questions, Stephen? I'm, uh, I'm, 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 kind of, I'm for the use case. I, I was for it in the past, so when it came up again, I was like, "No, I, I just think these things always like, like all the discussion around rough dot name, like, oh, we just a simple thing, and in there, and it created a lot of questions and confusions and about where it could go, how it would work, and uh, like, I'm, I'm good with lightweight fields, but like." as long as that confusion doesn't create more problems for people then I, then I don't, I don't see, but I mean, there's going to be somebody who asks like, Oh, if there's this situation and that situation and there's some dilemma that they have, it's then going to be another problem that's going to have to be solved uh, on the maintainer side. Um, that, and then it ends up ultimately being pushed down to the users. I think the idea is the more complex scenarios would use something more complex like an S bomb. But this was literally just what is the from statement referencing? So I don't have to, even if I have the Docker file, I still don't know if the from what it was built against has changed over time. Yeah, but Docker files can have like like is you know they can have tens of from from statements now. That, that's yeah, with the multi stage questions. builds. <laughs> like, yeah, we're it, only looking. It's... We're only looking at the last from at this point. Whatever one you built and tagged. This is the final image. I... I just which is, not a great, which is not a great indication of like having used a whole static build tool chain and then throw it over into a distro list or Alpine. Yeah, I think we decided that was 
too difficult a problem for us to try to solve here. Even if you ignore multi-stage, just saying the last from is not helpful because you have copy from as well to copy files from one image into another. So the graph is incredibly complex already. Um, Y'all started talking about the thing I wanted to talk about as soon as I stepped away. Uh, so I don't know who initiated the conversation, but um, this PR at one point had me advocating for like being able to specify multiple things as dependencies because, you know, the base image is, I think, the simple to understand thing and the common case. But really, what I want to express is a dependency graph of images. Um, and you can do that by having your base image be an index that references one or more images or indexes. Um, that's what I plan to do, is to express very interesting dependency graphs here. But yeah, the, as, as worded in this PR, I think it's a little oversimplified. And um, if if the if the value that gets shoved into one of these things is signified JSON, I'm going to say no to it. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. Okay. Uh, well, then my my I, I'm good with with it. Uh, you know, as long as we're going to take on the, or just remember when it gets complicated, and you'd be like, oh, I remember Steven said that was complicated. Would that would that would get complicated? Um, and then on the other portion here. Um, we can drop the ref in there. It should just be base.name. The ref was is just for like the image ref um, for the primary image, if that makes sense. Like it, it's not like a typed thing. Um, I'll make a comment on Can you PR. explain more? Okay. So like open containers.image.ref.name was supposed to leave extra pieces for a ref, right? So like if we came up with like registry or or uh, authority or you know other things under ref the this this is now just base so it's just base dot name and base dot digest right okay like it, it, there's just no need for extra hierarchy there we could probably drop the ref as it is I, I do hope it does get complicated because I intend to do complex things with this. Um, but yeah, I, I agree with your sentiment, Stephen. I think this is kind of sticky. Yeah. What do you mean by complex? Like, are you thinking of putting multis in here? Because so I think so what the I'm, idea is what I'm talking would be in an S bomb kind of thing. Like no, it's, no, Steve. It's just so to simple. I think I think you're you're confusing complexity with like capability and uh, I'm talking about incidental complexity. I'm talking about, oh, we make a small change here at the base of the system and it introduces in incidental complexity for the rest of the users, right? And this is this is the case where it's like, so we so we found, you know, two cases where there's complexity around the from statement and then there's complexity around the, um, uh, around whether this references the multi-arc manifest or like a, like a manifest list or does it directly reference it? Right, those are just two pieces of incidental complexity that come out of it. And like my concern is that there's more incidental complexity. But I'm like like we go forward with it even without introducing even if that incidental complexity is uh, a problem in the future. That's more we don't know, we don't know until we play with it more. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, because we we did because the ones we have discussed, we did we did scope it. For instance, uh, back to your from statement question. If you copy the Ubuntu image from Docker Hub to your private registry, and that's where you built from, it would it would actually point to your private registry, and then uh, because that's where you built it from, and that's where you're tracking it. Uh, the index one is a great update, and I think you know what landed. So all as long as those clarities get added to the definition of it, so people know how to use it. Um, but what the next round of complexities are? Yeah, you're right. I, I don't know if we know. But wouldn't that be a tooling specific decision. So if you have two possible places you can pull the base image from because it's copy between registries, it's up to the tool writer to decide what they want to put in there, whether it's what you actually built from or whether you want to let the user override it and put a public value in there. It's, it's a should field anyway, so you can put anything you want in there. I think the question is how do you make it generally useful? Because to, I think Stephen's point, 
if you're trying to do this within a particular company, then use your company's names, annotation, do whatever you want. If you're trying to put something up for a public consumption for some other company to use, some other user to use with some other tool chain, that there has to be some consistency to it so they know they have a, a chance of success. Yeah, and so a lot, of, a lot of the stuff that I end up building on my site, I will override the registry to say use this local mirror just to avoid hitting the internet on a lot of the builds. But it is an image that's available upstream outside in a public repo that people could hit. So I could yeah, see mirrors making are tooling. Totally, yeah, I, I, I could, think mirrors, to your point, mirrors are a mirror. You get what you get. It, yeah, it's more the copy scenario is more I was referring to. Yeah, so I think there are scenarios where you could potentially want to tell the tooling that, yeah, I know I'm using the firm from this value, but put something else in that field so other users can use this field. Uh, I feel overall supportive for the, the use case. Uh, I just had one question around multi-arc. Looking at the final image, you, how do you derive which tree of the multi-arc you're going to navigate down the index itself? The annotation sure. digest would point to a specific uh, index, right? I think you're going to follow the same platform as the image that you're trying to you compare it with. How do you the image right now? Say so I, I think you're hitting the problem that uh, Jason's update to that PR tries to address, um, where it's ambiguous, like which digest you use as the base digest. Exactly. Um, yeah, so what I think is most intuitive and useful, and I'm open to people disagreeing with that, um, is if you're pointing to a tag of something, uh, the digest should be the digest of that tag. Um, your base digest should map to whatever is tagged. The reason being that it is easier to detect if that tag has moved, um, if the digest is exactly the same as the tag. So if you know, there are other arguments against this. So maybe you want the digest to point directly to like the the child that corresponds, so that you can more easily um, line up the file system layers. You know, uh, but I think I, I think it's more confusing that way. I'm I'm looking. I mean, basically, I'm kind of trying to figure out what the thinking is here because I think we've gone through the same logic of being able to detect the child image. Um, the image itself doesn't, my understanding is that the architecture of the image doesn't stick somewhere without looking at things like config. The manifest doesn't have that information. Only the multi-arc index has it. So the navigation down the chain from the index, the, the problem I'm having is you have the final image, you look at the base digest, uh, you have to walk through the base digest and if it's an index, you have to look at every possible manifest that the index references find the closure and then kind of detect the final digest. Um, is, is, that, is there any thinking around that or we can just assume that is an unknown yeah. problem that we don't uh, know? Yeah, there, I mean, there's definitely thinking around this, but it, this, is, this is kind of what I was getting at. This is a build problem, right? Like, because even if you know that you have a base image that you referenced, now you gotta go figure out how to build that base image, right? So I can go like, I can go on my Kubernetes cluster or whatever, and I can look at this thing running a particular image and it'll say like, you know, Steve-O's great app image. And then I have to go and hunt that down in a, a bunch of source repositories and figure out where that Docker file is built, right? So ultimately that kind of, that kind of information about like, okay, how do I rebuild this? So if this base image changes and has security updates, how, which images do I have to build, rebuild to figure that out? I have to have reverse dependency data to figure that out. If I want to go and figure out like, okay, I need to update this image because something changed in it, then I have to go back and figure out, okay, I got to rebuild the base image. Then I have to go build those those child images from it. The knowing this image name will let me go back and go to a registry and maybe I can go figure out where that base image has come from. But ultimately that kind of information just has to exist at the build layer. Like unless we push all that entire build artifact layer down into the into the image system, which is a that's a big old can of worms. Yeah. So basically, for indexes, you need more information to deterministically find out which would be the final digest, um, or at least the yeah. best to track of all these pieces of information. And that, that's fair. I think that's yeah. I, I mean, I, how I envision this. Go ahead, John. I I expect this would. Uh, 
usually be used as a signal or even a trigger to go back to the build system and start it over. Um, and you would need out of band information to know like, how do you restart the build system? How do you trigger a new build or which build system? Um, right. And so I think that would be some configuration on your, on your side. If you can map between, oh, this image is stale, what, what do I need to do to resolve that? Um, I don't know that you would do that resolution um, like in the same process that's detecting a change. You would just detect, oh, this is out of date. Let me tickle the build system. No, that's fair. And you know, maybe all this lives, lives, should live in your build system instead. But I think having being able to detect this um, in the registry is a nice feature. Now we we enrich the information of the image exactly the same way. So again, just to kind of like support the argument, this information is good to have. Um, and if there is a place to put it in the image, I think it makes sense. Uh, yeah. it'll, it'll at least give you a hint, which yeah. which is so, great. Meanwhile, I'm sure you're also here watching me moving, moving on in my mind. So. <laughs> you, you guys see this as a human readable name, or you know, did you want it to be a little more prescriptive, like you know, go to this URL and find out how we built this from image? Or, so when um, you say is it human readable, or it, it's the time? ref, so the thing you would Docker pull. Okay. So a link I threw out there and I'll throw it in the notes for the meeting, but um, one of the PRs I set out a while back was whether or not we want to clarify in the image spec that the uh, annotations that we define in there, are they designed to only be annotations? Can they also be labels on the image because most of the tooling out there today, people are using them as labels. They're not using them as annotations. Brandon, can you say that one more time? One of the people that are people, using annotations. People using the org open containers image uh, annotations that we defined here today. I think almost every case I've ever seen is someone in a Docker file defining it as an image label. And so that goes into the image config and not into the annotation section. So I'm just wondering if there needs to be clarification from the OCI side saying that this should only be used as an annotation. Don't expect it to work with any tooling if you define it as a label or not. Yeah. That's a, that's a nice burger right there. Yeah, yep. that's, that's literally the argument against that annotations dating back to 2014. Um, so I think that's, that comes in the kind of like, I don't remember if there's actually what kind of verbiage we uh, arrived at with the function of annotations in general. But to basically say these, these are optional and if you choose anything in here to um, Basically, if you break anything, if you if you change anything in here, in here and it breaks a the tool, then effectively you, you screwed up. So people can build workflows like what we're describing. Um, you know, John's got an idea in mind, and if what the values that he shoves in there breaks his his use case, then that's his own fault, effectively. Yeah, there was a comment on the issue from someone that said, you know, just realize this was a problem because Harbor was looking at annotations for parsing some of the fields, as it should. That's for defining annotations here. And so it was looking at the annotations and it caught the user off guard because the user saw it and thought that it was the same thing as a label. And they were defining labels on their images. And with the common standard Docker tooling, you can't set annotations. That's the big problem. That's a feature. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to make a PR for a Docker? Anyhow, no. <laughs> um, that's good. Um, all right. 
the it was it was actually a good discussion. I'm glad that John and Jason you know put that on the, the discussion because I know that it's Jason's been me a couple of times and I sit down and and start on it, but it, it, it that one is one that requires more discussion. Um, I, while listening, I did like last week. Um, <clears throat> last week, a few of us dialed in for kind of a, a grooming of the, of the distribution spec. I, I don't think the, the recording's put up there. I mean, maybe we, did, we can in full transparency, but it was very, very, very informal and relaxed and banter. Um, uh, and th those are very useful also. Um, so don't feel like you missed anything particularly. It was mostly, it would have just been observing some kind of cleanup. And one of the things that we liked that I uh, more or less proposed here, Steve, Stephen already called in, um, is we've had so many issues with some of these different checks that we have, and it varies across all of them. Like I think at some point we had three different DCO checks um, and a couple of them that were like getting things out of sync of like configuring who's the actual approver in some tool versus inside of the project itself, like just read the read the code owner's file. And if it's a maintainer in that file, then they can make approvals. Uh, so we like ripped out full approve for the distribution spec and switched to the GitHub uh, code owners. Um, so oh, I'm not actually, on, I don't have the same rights on this one to do for the image spec as I did for the distribution spec, but. Um, I'll, I'll, I can sync up with uh, Amy or Chris on that later uh, to, to switch over to the code code owners piece of it. But there's a few other CI stuff that's good to just kind of dust off and make sure that we're using GitHub Actions instead of Travis. I think we've already discovered Travis in here now. But um, anyhow, uh, I really, really like having an open communication chat and especially with, with maintainers, a few maintainers on the call. So thank you, John, for dialing uh, John Poole. Right. John Johnson, sure, also, but Stephen. Uh, so I'll, I'll ping you all again. Uh, I'm glad you're here for the other, other discussions as well, but we, can, we should do another grooming like that for the image spec soon. Yeah, my, my Wednesdays are hot right now. So if we can do other days usually thursday afternoons are good okay um we can john bull john johnson derek do y'all have days that are no but an hour or two earlier would be swell yeah it's late oh derek you're not even on this the uh i mean tomorrow is somewhat open for me thursdays in general I don't know if we need another poll. Okay. Tomorrow, I'm trying to get out of town. Um, so, see how that goes. But I'll look at something for next week. Okay. So, it sounds like earlier in general, and we've already captured that over here as well. Um, good, good, good. Well, we're right at time. Uh, good discussion, everybody. Any last issues or blockers or whatever that somebody wants to shout out in one minute? No, it's good to see everybody. Have a good one. And now, welcome back, stranger. <laughs> Cheers. Thank All right. You. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.